read. We're going to be talking here about a ganglion cyst. Another common name is a Bible bump. Uh, they call that, interestingly, in the old days, they would take the largest thing they could find, which was a Bible, and they would smack it. It would pop it. Um, in doing so, it was uh, a treatment way to get rid of it. We don't recommend doing that. Don't try this at home. Uh, a ganglion cyst, by definition, it's a fluid collection, and most typically they come out of the joint. The wrist in this location is a very common place for it. Another common place that these can be found is on the back of the wrist. Uh, other bumps in this area could come from arthritis and some of the particular joints could cause some lumps and bumps. So we believe this to be a ganglion cyst based on the location of it, based on the physical findings. So often this diagnosis is made on clinical exam alone. An ultrasound can also see it to verify if it's a fluid filled sac, which is the case with a ganglion cyst. It can also make sure that there's not a mass there. There's other things that this potentially could be. It's possible to have a soft tissue growth, such as one called a lipoma, which is a fatty tumor. Um, not as common to find that in this area as there would be a ganglion cyst. Other involvement could also be arthritis from the wrist joint. This can be best assessed by obtaining a x-ray. It can show us degenerative changes, arthritis changes in that area. Because this individual has had it for several months, it's non-pulsatile, there's no history of trauma, that brings us back to the most likely diagnosis of a ganglion cyst or a Bible bump. So in this case, since we believe it to be a ganglion cyst, we discuss potential treatment options. There's always the choice of do nothing, watch, wait, and see. Uh, in the case of a ganglion cyst, these can persist for many months on end. Um, it is possible that over time they gradually grow and become more problematic. It is possible that it can resolve on its own, that the body discovers that it's an issue and cleans it and gets rid of it. The reason it often persists, it usually comes deep from within the joint, often related to arthritis or just irritation. But the ganglion cyst, it's a fluid-filled sac. If you imagine like a water balloon that can kind of expand, and it's filled with a cystic type fluid, which is also often a little more thick rather than a complete liquid. Um, the body has walled it off with this soft tissue and hence often it can hide from the body's mechanisms to get in there and, and get rid of it. In the old days when they would smash a Bible bump, it would pop and that trauma in popping it could actually stimulate a response for the body to get in and absorb it and get rid of it. Um, you can surgically go in and excise them, make an incision, coming over and actually dissecting around the capsule and extracting the cyst itself. There are some potential risks to that. Because the, the artery comes there, there's always the possibility of trauma to the artery. Uh, there's also the possibility of trauma to the median nerve. These cysts, when they're deep in the tissue, can expand or push against the other soft tissues and potentially could displace the nerve or the artery slightly out of its normal position. So there's always the potential, although these can be done safely and, and be performed um, without complication, there's always that potential complication. So when discussing this with your healthcare provider, you may elect to simply observe it, watch and give it time. You may, for uh, reasons, desire to have it further imaged, which could include an ultrasound or an MRI scan or x-rays to evaluate for arthritis in these areas. Uh, you could elect to proceed with surgical in intervention and excision. In doing so, this is not a do-it-yourself-at-home activity. We don't want you to do this at home because infection or complications could occur. So as far as treatment options to discuss on what to do with this, one option is to leave it alone. Um, give the body time to see what it can do, and it's possible the body can resolve it. It may stay as it is for an extended period of time it potentially could become larger, forcing the patient to choose uh, to have it treated. With injection, um, estimates vary. Uh, perhaps you have a 60% chance with an injection and decompression of this cyst that that can be enough of a stimulus to get the body to resolve it without any reoccurrence. If you were to choose to have this surgically excised, um, success can be anywhere in the mid 90-95% range as far as not get, having reoccurrence. Unfortunately, there is nothing that's 100% successful on getting rid of this and not having any reoccurrence. In this case, we have elected to proceed with uh, injection and uh, 
decompression of it, and we will proceed with uh, prepping it and proceed in that direction now. But the area will be sterilely prepped, cleaned up. Uh, we will inject it with a little local anesthetic to kind of numb it. In doing so, we'll typically come in and out of the cyst a few times, poking a few small holes into that cyst, and then inject it with a steroid with some numbing medicine. Once it's properly uh, injected, then I'll push some pressure on it, which will pop the cyst. And instead of using the Bible, we use the needle and that will pop it. By injecting it, the hope is that the body can calm down the inflammation irritation that's causing it. And by the trauma of having popped it, we hope that that's enough of a stimulation to the body to get in and absorb it and get rid of that. If that is successful, that's all that might need to be done. If it reoccurs, depending on how long it lasted, uh, you could decide to do it again versus to surgically excise it.